watching my videos and thanks so much for your comments, likes, shares, and subscribes. This month I'm doing things a little bit differently. I'm going to be giving you guys a bi-weekly love forecast uh, twice in October uh, instead of the long format love forecast that I usually do. Changing it up a little bit. Need a little bit of change in my life. So for your reading today, I am going to be using the Thelema Tarot deck. I will be clarifying with the Chicoli Tarot Mini and then pulling a guidance message for you guys at the end of the reading from the Wisdom of the Hidden Realms Oracle Cards. If you would like to get a mini little mini Lenormand love reading, I have those over on my Patreon. Those are going to be featured right around the mid-month mark. Um, but you guys will be getting free love forecasts from me twice this month. They will be by weekly love reading. So stay tuned and thanks so much for watching. Hi Pisces, welcome to your October 1st to the 15th bi-weekly love reading. Thank you guys for joining me. If you are a new subscriber, welcome. If you are a returning subscriber, thanks so much for coming back and watching my videos. Watching my tarot readings. All right. Let's get some energy going here for my Pisces that may be watching. Pisces suns, Pisces moons, Pisces risings, Pisces on the cusp. What does Pisces need to know regarding their love lives for October 1st through the 15th for that time period? What does Pisces need to know? Something almost flipped over there. I think that was the Ace of Cups, but it didn't completely show to me. We'll see if it comes out in your reading. How does that sound? Spirit, what does Pisces need to know with regards to their love lives? From October 1st through the 15th, 2017, this is their bi-weekly bi love forecast for all Pisces, suns, moons, birthdays, and those on the cusp that may be watching. A couple more shuffles here, guys. What does Pisces need to know, Spirit? What are the love messages and energies that you have for Pisces from October 1st through the 15th? They're telling me one more here. One more shuffle. Okay. Your current situation, what is challenging for you? The root of the situation or what has put you there? What is crowning you? What you're maybe thinking and feeling? Recent past, near future. All right. And then at the bottom of the deck, ooh, we have the Three of Swords. Some of you dealing with heartbreak. Unnecessary sacrifice. Okay. Um, let's see what's underneath. Could be a painful love triangle. We have the Nine of Cups. So this is wish fulfillment. Getting what you want feeling satisfied, feeling smug. Um, in this deck, I feel like, um, and in the order of what I'm seeing, it's like you do get what you want, but it also means that you have to lose something along the way. I am seeing some kind of heartbreak here, um, but let's take a look at the rest of your cards. Um, I do feel like this could be telling me that this, this is the direction things are going in. So um, if it had been, for example, the Nine of Cups at the bottom of the deck with the Three of Swords before that, it would have said to me that through a necessary sacrifice, through some heartbreak, you do end up getting what you want. But I'm seeing that for some of you, you end up getting what you want. But then I do see that there is going to be some heartbreak after that. So let's not uh, jump the gun yet. Let's see what your current situation is telling me. Okay, Seven of Swords reversed, crossed by the Queen of Pentacles, upright. What comes below you, we have the Two of Swords reversed. What comes above you, we have Judgment in reverse. Recent past, Eight of Wands reversed. Near future, we have the Star in reverse. Yes, the cards are shuffled. Yes, the deck. I begin with all the cards upright, and then I shuffle them, shuffle them, shuffle them both ways. And um, I can tell you right now that we're going to, I'm looking at cards all mixed up here. They're all upright, reverse, upright, reverse. So it's very well mixed. Um, so this is 
just a coincidence. And of course, I don't believe in coincidences, so it's telling me that because of the reversals, there could be some blocked energy that you're dealing with. And remember, for me, a reverse card is just a different letter of the alphabet. It changes the card's meaning. It is still, they can still be positive messages here. So I don't want you to get wrapped up or hooked um, as to whether a card is upright reverse, being positive or negative. That's definitely not the case. So let's begin with your current situation, and I will be clarifying some of these cards here as we get through the reading. You have the Seven of Swords in reverse. So I'm seeing that <sighs> this is a mental energy, and it says that some of you are regretting, feeling guilty, or... Um, got caught doing something, got caught red -head, got caught red-handed doing something that you weren't supposed to be doing. Um, I'm seeing also that for some of you, you want the treasures involved in a situation, but you are um, feeling guilty. You would feel guilty or you feel bad if you move forward with that. Anyway, I think you're overthinking something or you're, um, you're really in your head and you're playing some kind of game here where you are just uh, fooling yourself. You're just fooling yourself. And it's best to let go of guilt because guilt is not really a productive emotion. Um, guilt and worry does not really move us forward on our journey, spiritually speaking. So just kind of saying, like, don't waste your time flip-flopping on an issue here. Your challenge is the Queen of Pentacles. Could be dealing with a Virgo Taurus or Capricorn female. Energy. The Queen of Pentacles is someone who could be like the perfect girlfriend, wife, material. Um, it could also be the more feminine aspect of a male energy if you are a female in a heterosexual relationship or if you are even interested in a, if you are a, a man interested in a woman. So what I was going to say is that this is gender fluid. We don't really discriminate here between male and female energies, but um, I am seeing a more feminine energy here, so if this is a man, it's someone that has more feminine energy around him. So I was saying the Queen of Pentacles, Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn, and she is coming in upright in the challenge position. Um, you may uh, regret uh, some decisions that you made regarding a female Virgo, Taurus, or Capricorn. Or you may be... Um, this person may be somehow blocking you or helping you. I feel like this person is helping you. I feel like this person is positive. Although I will say some characteristics about the Queen of Pentacles. She's very focused on her career. She's very focused on business. She, um, she's very nurturing and caring. She cares a lot about her family, her home, and especially her children if she has children. She is someone that cares mostly and a lot about the people that give value to her, that are um, closest to her. Um, but this is someone who is, is uh, like a caretaker. Um, she, she cares like a lot about material things, the finer, finer things in life. She's very down to earth, very nurturing, very caring, um, and takes care of herself, like I said, and her home. Usually this is someone who's a bit of a homebody as well, uh, just to add to that list of characteristics. Um, so that might help you figure out who this person is. They are coming up in your energy field. They're coming up as a challenge for you, um, at least in the first part of October. What has put you here with the Seven of Swords reversed? You have the Two of Swords reversed, which is telling me a decision was made, you came off the fence about something, or someone has made a decision that was not your decision, but a decision was made because I'm seeing that even if there is a stalemate, an ongoing stalemate situation, that someone has come off the fence about it. So that is why you are here flip-flopping back and forth or regretting something or feeling guilt over something. Um, now in the recent past, I have the Eight of Wands reversed. This is some issues with communication, possibly with a fire sign. I'm also seeing blocked communication or something happening really fast. Um, these arrows don't really, they feel like they're kind of, um, they don't have a direction to go in. So 
I'm just basically seeing issues with communication in your past. Um, and yeah, right now I feel like you've either already made up your mind or someone's already made up their mind for you and now you're second guessing yourself or you're feeling like you got caught doing something. It could have to do with these communications. What you're thinking and feeling is judgment in reverse, so it's telling me you're being very critical and judgmental. This uh, first half of October, um, also it says you're stuck in the past, you're refusing to accept responsibility for your role and the actions um, and things that have happened in your past. You may be reviewing your past a lot. However, this is saying the jury's still out in your mind because you're thinking and feeling, oh, well, this, if this had happened, I would have done this. or. Um, uh, you could just be feeling very critical of your loved one, so you need to watch, so just watch that, just watch out for that. Um, it's also Major Arcana, so it's telling me that uh, something, some decision here, I'm seeing, a though a decision has been made, you're thinking and feeling, and we'll probably go ahead and clarify that then, is um, that something there's something bigger that you're thinking and feeling that has not reached a verdict. Um, and so that's why I'm seeing that you're kind of, um, you're kind of stuck here. You don't feel, I feel like you don't, you don't feel good about something here. Like mentally you're being very indecisive or wishy-washy. Um, or you're just overthinking something and you're being very critical of everyone. You're being very critical, even of yourself. So also watch that. Because um, remember, we do have the Three of Swords at the bottom of the deck, so this is inevitably le leading to some kind of heartbreak. Um, I do feel like um, if there's something that you want to do, um, go ahead and do it. You know, because I'm seeing that all of, you know, everything in the small cross here affects the outer cross. And where this is heading, you know, in the near future is the star in reverse, sign of Aquarius, could be dealing with an Aquarius, could be dealing with a Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn, or Leo, Aries, Sagittarius. But where this is going is I'm seeing a lot of pessimism. I'm seeing that you don't feel that there's hope for rec reconciliation. You may not, you may be feeling hopeless about a situation or that your stars aren't shining as bright. Um, I'm also seeing some of you feeling a bit lost on your journey. Um, it just says that you're feeling hopeless or you don't feel like this is uh, ever going to work out or you're losing faith in some situation here. So let's go ahead and clarify some of these cards because I know you guys are probably scratching your heads. Some of you wondering what does this all mean? Why is the Queen of Pentacles here, Spirit, for Pisces? Why is the Queen of Pentacles here? What is, what is she doing here? What is the Queen of Pentacles doing? Oh, well, we have the Knight of Cups. Yes. Interesting. Um, so this is actually, I'm sorry, this is the Page of Cups here in her past. I am seeing a love message or some gentle, playful communication in this person's past. So that's very nice. Let's see what else. Or this person was being very sort of flirtatious. We have the Empress. So this is like someone who's very nurturing, loving, could be a mother. Uh, she's coming up with the Empress. So this is like the ideal person. And then we have the Knight of Cups. So this is someone who's following her heart. She's very open and compassionate. Um, I'm seeing water energy here. So of course, um, this could be also your energy, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, uh, or someone that has a lot of water in their chart. And also the Empress is a sign of Taurus slash Aries. All right, so some of you dealing with an Aries, some of you dealing with a Taurus. Taurus would make sense, especially with the Queen of Pentacles here. I'm seeing this person. This person is in, on a romantic journey, possibly with you, or feels has romantic feelings, or is extending a 
a romantic offer. I'm seeing that in her future. So let's see, why is the Eight of Wands in reverse uh, in your past? Why is the Eight of Wands in reverse in Pisces past? Two of Wands. There was a choice. There was a path forward. I have the Eight of Cups, but someone decided to walk away. All right, someone felt... Kind of like a, I was going to say like a caged bird that couldn't fly. So something didn't take off the ground here and I see someone walking away. Seven of Wands. So this is someone who's being very defensive, who's very frustrated. I'm also seeing that. I'm also seeing <laughs> this in this deck. Look at the Seven of Wands here. So someone's getting a spanking. So the, it's kind of like, it's just basically saying that the, it was a harsh reality. There was um, someone who is feeling very defensive, um, traditional meaning, but also someone is getting their butt kicked here. So there could have been some disciplinary, disciplining going on, but I do feel like the lack of the blocked communication was because someone was not satisfied with the situation. Um, yes, there was a choice in the past. There was a decision, but it could have been involving fire energy. I see fire energy here and water. But like in your present, I'm seeing water energy. And like I said, with the Empress, Taurus, or Aries. So something flip over. So let's do one more here. Uh, let's see, let's see, why is judgment in reverse? Why is judgment in reverse? What? Five of Wands, Ten of Cups, Four of Swords. Judgment is in reverse because I see some conflict here, I see some competition, some one-upmanship possibly. Well, I'm not really seeing that, I'm just seeing some fighting, I'm seeing some frustration, conflict. Like, we have the fire-breathing dragon here, but I'm also seeing a lot of balls in the air. So it could be that in the past, someone had a lot of competition or, or there was something here that was provoking you. Um, currently, I think you're feeling pretty happy and very, very happy. But in the future, I do see that you're going to be taking a break. All right, so... Let's see, why, let me just pull one more card. Why is Judgment in Reverse? Can you clarify the Four of Swords with Judgment in Reverse? Eight of Swords. Well, it could be that you're not making a decision because you're feeling like a victim. You're feeling like you don't, you can't envision the possibilities here or you're feeling trapped or stuck or um, there's someone here with the Eight of Swords that is afraid, really. And it's the mental energy. This is all mental energy. But I feel like you're pretty happy right now, but this is where things are going. So just be careful about that. All right, so Pisces. Let's pull us a message. Let's pull you a message for October 1st through the 15th for Pisces, Suns, Moons, Risings, and those on the cusp. Spirit, please help guide Pisces on their highest spiritual path in love and in light. One guidance message for Pisces. Please help guide them. Some of you don't want to be tied down and I do see someone special though in your life. The resting tree. Well, I am seeing that in your thoughts. Someone needing a break here. Patience. Stillness.
All right, so let's see, that's card 22, which does reduce to a four. We have the four of swords there. So the resting tree is a sign for you Pisces to stop focusing and planning and just be at peace in the moment. Well, that's, that's all what's going on right here with the seven of swords reverse. This is just like overthinking a situation, trying to plan everything out, trying to kind of um, strategize. Just be at peace in the moment. This is the representative of non-action and relaxation. Patience is the key to being with this ally. The resting tree asks you to slow down, sit back, and watch the roses bloom and the birds feed in the meadow. This is not the time to forge ahead in any way. You may not be taking enough breaks, so you're invited to be still and contemplate your good fortune, even if it means blessing the chaos in your life. This is a sign to allow everything to fall away except the stillness of the moment. It's like living within the space between breaths. When the resting tree appears, it signals that you've done all you can for now, and it's time to unwind and allow your story to unfold of its own accord. You've earned the right to rest and relax. Amazing ideas will come if you do. Remember the ancient saying, we do without doing and everything gets done. Okay, so if you are one of the people running around overdoing everything and uh, dealing with a lot of um, frenetic energy, then it's time to stop thinking about how stressed you are and just to go with the flow here. Otherwise, you could be dealing with physical illness or unable being unable to enjoy your life. So it's just encouraging you to be still, take time to meditate every day. Um, take the time out now so that you don't regret mistakes that you don't, so that you don't make mis mistakes now that you'll regret later. Um, it says, don't worry, all those things you're trying to manage will still be there when you're ready to move forward again. Only then will you have a clear head with which to think. All right, so try to stay positive, bless the chaos in your life. I know that's easier said than done. And things are going to happen on their own accord. It's just saying you don't have any control over any of it, so you just need to let things happen. You can only control you at this point, okay? Everything else will eventually fall into place, okay? So let me see if there's anything else here. Yep, everything's going to fall into place for you. And stop overthinking, stop overthinking, stop overdoing. Give, you some time, give yourself some time to rest. And uh, that is my message for you, Pisces. For the first half of October, take good care of yourselves. I am doing private readings. If you'd like to book a private reading with me, you can do so. Click below in the description. My uh, scheduling app is there in the link there, and you can book your private reading that way. Um, it's super easy to use, and it will schedule in your time zone without having to calculate anything. And uh, you can, you know, schedule when it's convenient for you. And I do have lots of different reading types available at lots of affordable prices. I also am doing mid-month readings as usual over on my Patreon page, link below in the description. Uh, this month I'm going to be doing the mini Lenormand readings with the Romance Angels, messages from the Romance Angels for your sun, moon, and rising signs. So be sure to check those out. It's also easy to sign up for that. It's only $1 to pledge and you get all 12 zodiac signs. So that's also an amazing affordable deal, which... I honestly don't know how I can keep it up, but I do, and it's because I feel rewarded by all of you being there with me along the way. So thank you so much for allowing me to read for you guys, and take good care of yourself.